other thing that was popping up with these reviews, and I, again, I'll send you over to uh, Retro Ralph's direction. He did a whole breakdown on the difference between solenoids and transducers, uh, uh, which yes. are essentially speakers, right? Yeah. And the best way that I can almost equate it to after talking to him uh, via messaging and stuff. So in my cabinet here, I have Xbox 360 rumble motors. Yep. Now, although they're not speakers, they still work in waves, right? Just like a yeah. speaker would. Yes. It can feel, you can feel the rumble and you yeah. can feel the vibration, but it's not a hit no, it's like a, a solenoid build up, does. build down. It's a wave. So right. you've got this sweeping pattern, right? Yeah. Right. And I got to believe, so when people are asking, what's the difference between solenoid and a transducer? I got to believe that's the difference of the sensation. It's not that the rumble doesn't work with the the app games cabinet that it can't work and that it's going to feel false no it, may, it might feel perfectly fine what's interesting I, when you look at the underside um i think i think doug is the one that showed the underside um they carved out the wood and that speaker is right up against the plastic underneath your hands so it's, oh it, it, i mean right it's, where that at games they, panel is with the control panel on. Yeah, they pretty much, it looks like, are putting that speaker through as thin of a material as possible to be vibrating on your hand um, to right. get that sensation. So you're basically having all the, it's basically like essentially turning the speakers up to 10 and having that all in your face rather than having a nice balanced array of speakers around you delivering subtle differences in vibration and tone. Well, and the, the reason why I think they did it is because again, the rumble bow in there going through three quarter inch MDF wood. I, it's hard to feel that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, yeah. it it doesn't. Uh, you um, could probably do it if you put big stonking speakers in there, but we're talking about building materials. Here I actually asked Ralph if he thought of a way that I could put because uh, he he wound up doing an entire uh, episode, and it was putting this subwoofer like one in there in in the mm. into the arcade one up cab. Mm -hmm. which he said it basically got obnoxiously loud <laughs> um, <laughs> but but that it that it, it that it worked really well for him and i was like i wonder if i could put if I, it would be do good to put something like that in here unfortunately everything is controller based it's not audio based um yeah so i, I but i'm like that'd be kind of cool to be able to <laughs> you need to run it. Uh, you basically need to connect it up to you your card and your computer, your sound card and your computer and run the sound through there with a pass-through headphone adapter or something. Oh. So you would actually, like, it, you could do it, but it'd be a bit of a trip. It'd be more wires be to more connect. Wires. You probably don't more wires. No, you've already got enough barriers to wanting to plug that thing in and play pinball on anyhow. Right. So, you know. Yeah. Right. And then, and then one of the, one of these also mentioned, <laughs> this is the biggest bunch of BS, I believe, uh -huh. that, Solenoids would wear out after a, in, in less than a year if you were doing daily play. What? So, so let me get this straight. So somebody said out there that solenoids are going to die after a year. Based on what evidence? Um, based off of apparent life cycles of solenoids based off of a, a, a sheet of paper that gave stats, I think. Uh, so when we're looking at solenoids that are not flipper mechanisms um, in arcade machines. Think of the solenoids that you use in the Namco point bank guns, right? Now, those things, if you've ever had one of those guns apart, which I have, um, they are a very different solenoid to what you get in a um, pinball machine. They are, <laughs> they're basically all hold winding. Um, they are very large for what they do. Um, and the mechanism in them is such that they don't have the problem with um, the, the, the backstop in the coil. The backstop and the, the plunger end on a coil is the thing that will make a solenoid fail and seize up because of the burring of the end of the rod. This thing's basically a slide-through rod with the stop at the end of the solenoid so very again 
if you haven't looked inside the pinball machine, you won't know what I'm talking about, but it looks very much like a matched solenoid that just pops up, drops down, has no bottom to it, um, or has a soft bottom with like a, a rubber ring at the bottom. So as far as things that will actually wear out on this, the only thing that's going to wear out is maybe the the rubber bit at the end where it goes back to rest. Like these solenoids well, these, are designed these... to fire and fire and fire and not die. Because these are, uh, again, Ralph showed it. It's a little box. He popped open the cover. And, oh, yeah. and you know, it is firing and it is hitting a stop at the end. Yeah. Yep. You know, to, that's what's making the, the thwack. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not a giant coil or anything. It's, it's obviously no, it's, some it's... other mechanism. They don't need to be big. No. Right. So what you're talking about, so my assumption is correct in that it's not like a, a regular flipper coil with a backstop. It's like a it's like a traveling pin, basically, with a spring load on it. I should see if I can look it up and, and find mm. it find it for you. Because I mean it, this is this is generally how that type of solenoid works. Like the like the ones that are designed to actuate something, they have a backstop on them because they need a backstop. The backstop is the stop that or the rest position for the coil. So for those ones that need to stop at a particular point and then travel to a particular point, that's why you have backstops on them, like flippers um, and uh, things like diverter ramps and stuff like that with a definite, like, sort of engaged and disengaged position. Mm -hmm. But for things like feedback solenoids like this, match solenoids are the same. Um, they don't need that. They just need to activate, make a whack noise or, like, hit a thing and then drop. You'll find the same mechanism. Well, this isn't technically true, but um, because pop bumpers do technically have a, a stop point in them in the bracket, but um, they work in a similar way. But um, they're, I guess, pop bumper solenoids uh, and mechanisms are a little bit like a flipper because they have a different stop point. Otherwise, the ring would just continue through the play field and you'd get some problems. So, yeah, match solenoids and stuff like that, they. Um, they don't need a stop point. And that's the point that wears out or makes the, the actual flipper rod wear out. So I'm calling bullcrap on a solenoid wearing out after a year, yeah, um, I'm, frankly. I'm getting it up right here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's a good... I'm going to share my screen here with you and uh, you'll be able to take a look. Ah! Ralph, yes, we're using your video. Sorry. Um, there it is. So the solenoid is there at the bottom that is in the arcade one-up cab. And you can see the little bracket that it hits up against to give yes. it a thwack. Yes. And you'll see that at the end, there is basically no stop on it. It's just a um, a coil with a little split ring on it that retains a spring in place. And the essentially, the backstop is at the front rather than the back. The backstop is that bracket that you see hitting um, up against the, the front of the coil. So there's not going to be any problems with that particular actuator burring up inside the um, the coil body, which is that rectangular metal body there. Mm -hmm. um, so th I don't see why that wouldn't last for longer than a year. And what we do know is even if the person claiming that this is a fact is, is right and this lasts for less than a year, Mel has already confirmed that it's very easy to get in there and switch things out. Could you switch back to that picture again? Chris? Nope, I closed it. <laughs> okay. I was um, I was a little over eager. So, <laughs> so there'll be a way that those things are connected inside the cabinet, and you can guarantee it's just going to be a plug, like a, a Molex plug or something similar. So if it dies, unplug it, screw another one in, you've got another allegedly year of enjoyment out but of the Even still, I can't believe that it would only last a year. I mean, that's not... If that was the case, you wouldn't be finding 30, 35-year-old pinball machines with original solenoids still functioning no no well you wouldn't because well the thing is that those those machines you know the, the solenoids in them they you, you need to maintain them obviously as we sure. all know with pinball so you know they will they do have disposable parts in them they are the coil uh, the coil end brackets and the um and the, the rods mm -hmm. and sleeves now, they're really the things you need to replace at all times with pinball machines but these these solid state these are essentially like solid state solenoids yeah um in fact that they've got like they're designed for repetitive use and they're not designed like a flipper mechanism which is it's designed to wear because of the way it's designed i've used design way too much then um <laughs> <laughs> but 
like looking at that picture that you showed, like these things are essentially like a a dedicated purpose built solenoid actuator. They're not actually a solenoid traditional solenoid. They're actually an actuator. So they're built in a different way. They function in a different way through a regular solenoid. So they're designed to be used over and over again and cycle over and over again. And if you have a look at the side, the, the reason why I was going to say you have a look at the size of those solenoids, if they're going, if RK1 up announce at CES that they're going to be doing more gun shooting games, which you could probably expect they will because they seem to be really popular, you can expect to see that package, that solenoid package inside a point blank gun oh. or that package inside a time crisis gun. Right. Because that's what they're going to be using to give that tech, tech, tech feedback. You won't mm -hmm. see the slide mechanism like you see on the Namco guns because they're really expensive. Um, but you will feel that tech, tech, tech feedback inside yeah. the gun. And that solenoid is going to be what's delivering that. But it's going to be redesigned. It won't be in a big box. It will be just in the the actual slide of the gun because it's small enough to be inside the slide of the gun. So that's my call there. That's what they're going to be using inside their light guns in future. 